we're very big on made in America. Uh, we like keeping the jobs local. We like providing for people a living uh, as well as building products that are um, more than just disposable. Uh, real heirloom quality products, products that people can pass down from one generation to the next. I think we've lost that sometimes in America. And so one of the reasons here that we focus so heavily on controlling all the processes, all the pieces, everything from creation to capture to printing to framing to mounting to shipping is because we want to be able to control the final product. We want to be able to control quality. My father, again, probably gave me an oil painting set of some sort. I remember them vaguely as a child where you paint, paint the numbers. Uh, and I love that. I thought that was great. It is just overwhelming, so gratifying that most of the time just kind of leaves me speechless. That when you hear that, you know, something that you created out of this history has actually impacted a life for change, for good. Wow. And you got to be that much of it. <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. I think it only gets to be mine for a second and then it goes where it belongs. It's a great thing to be a part of something that changes lives, affects lives, and blesses lives um, beyond what I could ever know or um, understand. And um, to, to see that happen and to witness it and to be a part of something like that is, um, is life-changing for me and for um, those that work here and I think for anyone that participates in the blessings of what art does. We work together as a team to create something so beautiful and so moving and so touching that it affects lives and and so it's a great it's a great blessing to be a part of something like that and to witness and to see you talk about painting a painting and from that painting it gets captured meaning that it's taken and, and a picture is taken of it and, and then it's color corrected and sometimes that color correction is very refining. You, it goes through several takes, several prints before you finally get it to a place where you know that it's the right color, the right way, that everything's um, corrected on it. And then from there, it gets sent to the printer. And then once it gets to the printer, um, it still has to have a frame decided and it still has to have a purpose of where it's going to be and where it's going to go. And it has to be sold into stores. And it, it, it's just quite a process. There are basically five different methods that we use to get uh, an image ready to display. One of them is we take a, a paper print and we glue it to a board and then put on a roll-on coating that gives it some UV protection and then that can go into a frame. Another method that we use is we will take a paper image and we will mount it to some foam board and then we'll put on a roll texture, put it into a heat press. And the thing that's nice about that is it gives it the look of canvas even though it's not canvas. Uh, we also mount canvas in the heat press to foam board. We stretch canvas over a frame that's made of wood and then that is put into a frame and then the last is we stretch canvas over a gallery wrap frame and that piece of art is just displayed as is without a frame. One of the things that is very important to us is that each one of the pieces that we produce is very high quality. We use all uh, UV protected coatings, whether it's our roll-on coatings, whether it's our layover coatings, or our spray coatings on our canvas. And when it comes to uh, limited edition pieces, we use only the highest quality material. Uh, museum grade canvas, 100-year uh, archival uh, spray, 
so that each one of those pieces will last a lifetime. We purchase our wood locally, um, generally from lumber yards and um, stateside uh, vendors of wood that's grown uh, in the United States. When we pass it through the rip saw, we're able to see the width of the board and uh, rip to the highest yield possible, which is important because uh, if our waste isn't too high, we can pass that on to the consumer. In your house, you have several kinds of moldings. You have a case molding that goes around your door, and that's a molding, and it uh, runs through a machine called a molder, which puts the profile that you have on your casing. That profile, or the look that you have on the frame that's around your picture is, is what I'm talking about. That, that gets put, or that gets created by passing through the molder. What we run for our general use is poplar and some knotty alder. We have the ability to grind any profile. It's kind of fun to, to lay out a, you know, a design to just create it. And it rarely ever do we um, get it on the first um, time that we're designing it. Uh, between myself and Gina, who does a lot of designing, and my uh, grinder and the guy who actually lays it out so that he'll be able to cut the knife. Um, after several iterations, we come up with something we really like. We came up with a process probably six, eight months ago where we can actually make poplar look like mahogany, um, walnut and a lot of other woods and actually bring out the grain which is the hard thing with poplar and uh, the funny thing is a lot of these wood vendors will come in and I'll hold up the piece and say what kind of wood is this and it's well it's cherry it's uh, maple it's it's walnut and uh, when I tell them it's poplar they can hardly believe it so it's a high-end finish uh, we like doing it because it increases the quality of our product I take a lot of pride in, in, in my work and what I do because I know people, they, they buy this product, they put it in their house, and so I, I want it to make it look the best I can. These days there's basically two types of, of moldings that you can use. There's wood and there's polystyrene. To tell you a little bit about what a polystyrene frame is, it is basically a petroleum-based product. It's just a foam stick, so to speak. So what they've done is they then take a photograph of a real frame and they print it onto a heat-sensitive material that they can then laminate. Similar to other things that are printed though, they will fade over time with exposure to light. Whereas if you have a wood frame, after they've uh, milled it, and then they finish it using stains or whatever they're trying to accomplish, over time the finish actually will get deeper and richer. So polystyrene is great if you're gonna wanna use it for um, like a child's room or, or something that you're, uh, decorative art that's not gonna last indefinitely. Um, but if you wanna have something that you're gonna keep for posterity and hand it down as an heirloom, you really want to go with something that's made out of wood because it'll actually get better with time. Here at Repartee we take great pride in the frames that we produce and we want to make sure that Everything is done perfectly uh, so that every frame that we are able to give to a customer is going to be top of the line. And what we do is we'll go grab some of our own custom molding that we've run and finished ourselves and check it for any major blemishes including large knots or things that aren't desirable to have in a frame. One of the major desirable characteristics about a wood frame is that 
um, it it has a unique feel about it because there's no other frame that's exactly like it because wood is you know itself unique and then we'll take that piece of molding that we went and grabbed and we'll, we'll cut it to the size of the image and then we'll nail it together um, so that it fits snugly around the image and make sure that all the corners look very well done and that way um, we can make sure that the customer will get a, a picture that is framed in such a way that they'll, will, they'll want to display that in their home or in their office or wherever they'll have it. The piece of art and the frame are brought to the assembly table and then from there they are um, brushed clean. That's probably the tenth time they've been brushed clean and they are um, put together and um, are able to be st um, stapled into the frame. Um, the backing is put on it, the corners are put on it. This is kind of the unique part of putting those two together when you have the print and you have the frame and um, obviously this is the piece that when it gets put together goes to the customer and so it's taken um, care of quite carefully and everyone um, makes sure that the frame is assembled correctly and, and they make sure that the print has no flaws and so it's gone through um, several um, people to get to that point and it and the last people to touch it is the assembly table. And it's, it's kind of a great thing to see the uniqueness of um, the pieces of art and the frames, and it's, it's a miracle that it all happens the way it does. When you uh, ship fine art, um, it's very fragile. A lot of pieces have glass, glass on them. Um, we had to hone in on a few skills, on a few things to, uh, to be able to ship art and protect it. So when it arrived to our customers, they were, they were getting um, just like it left the factory floor. We probably, in this company, spend more money than anybody to package our, our art up. We use, uh, we use anything from paper to foam to bubble wrap to cardboard. Um, it's uh, it's, a, it's an expense and it's, it's time consuming, um, the way we do our art. But um, it's proved over the end that uh, the better we package our art and uh, it gets to people safely the way they want it, it, it saves us in the long run. So when we are shipping out a piece of art to customers, um, it's, I'm, I believe it means something to them too and we want them to receive that um, piece of art in good condition when they get it. So, so we take that extra time to, to package it right, to get it to them. So when they open up this package, it's a beautiful piece of art. It's, it's, it's the way we send it out so they can put it on their wall and enjoy it. I remember some years ago, I, I went to a symphony and on the program they had a quote from uh, Picasso. And he said, art blows the dust off of everyday living. And that always kind of stuck with me. Art requires us to stop. It requires us to ponder. It requires us to, to reach and to think and to, to look for understanding. Art doesn't have to be expensive, but it has to be a part of our lives. It takes thought. Whether we get a small card that's 50 cents or a large painting that's $5,000, the image is the same. They both communicate values. They both communicate uh, and inspire us. And so I think for parents and for those uh, who might be intimidated by art or art galleries, it's so important to, to allow and to experience and to expose children to uh, beautiful things at a very young age, apart from it having to be expensive. Uh, art really is not a luxury. It's a necessity. It's the reason we live. I think art is the better part of us. It's our hopes, it's our dreams, it's the things that we wish for and we hope for. I think art's also a wonderful way and a wonderful tool to communicate to others, our family, our children, um, what matters most to us.